Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, the Corvette is still on the lift, and yes, the little heat pump that goes on top is missing. <laughs> you guys have already seen those videos, why we took that out, why we've been working on that. But actually, today's video is gonna be in regards to the cooling system. Now you guys will have already seen the cooling system come out for when we upgraded to the ATI pulleys and all that stuff on the belt drive for the supercharger because we had that locked up supercharger pulley. I'll have a link to that video up above. And then we had to wait all that time to get that stupid valley vent port replaced. Now we haven't put the supercharger back on the car because we have one more project that we need to do. And that project is actually be working on the cooling system. Well, you guys might be wondering, well, why are you going to have to wait for the supercharger for that to be off to work on the cooling system? Well, today what we're going to be actually doing is actually unblocking the rear steam ports on the back of the cylinder heads. And that blockout plate is on both the passenger and the driver's rear side. You can kind of see the bolt sticking out. That's where the tape is. And what happens is when you start to make a lot of horsepower with these LS motors, some of the problems end up being cylinders number seven or cylinder number eight. That's because there is uneven heat distribution going throughout the head. And that's due to the fact that they blocked off the rear ports. Now, I don't know why they blocked off the rear ports in the earlier LS motors. They were unblocked. You know, they actually had steam vents connecting up to the front and whatnot. But for what I've seen, a lot of guys actually upgrade when they turn the boost up. And as you guys know, we have turned the boost up on the uh, 2300 down here. When you start turning the boost up, you want to kind of eliminate all the weak points in the engine. And one of those weak points is that rear steam port block off plates in the back. And we're gonna do that by installing this GM front mount kit. I'm not sure if this is for a truck. I don't really remember what this came off of, but the GM part number is 12694769. What we're gonna do is mount it with the tube going backwards. But what we're gonna end up doing is modifying this just a little bit and bending the tube to point to the driver's side. And what that is going to allow us to do is have a steam port that we can run to the front. Now, if we had a LS3, if we didn't have a supercharger sitting on top, there are actually steam port kits that you can buy. There's kits that plug into the front, go underneath the intake manifold and connect to the front, or they connect to the rear, go over the driver's side or the passenger side, just depending on what kit you get and it ties into your factory steam port vents. Unfortunately, we have this big lump of aluminum with some blower <laughs> rotors inside of it, and that's gonna prevent us from using any of the bolt-on kits that are available through the aftermarket. There are LS8 kits, LS9 kits, so those would work in those applications, but because we got this you know, LS9 supercharger and this basically rear intake port overhangs the back by like a good quarter inch. So we may have to modify this even more by grinding down one of the corners. I'm just not sure, but we will find out very shortly if, uh, if this is going to clear or not. All right, guys, the rear steam port has been installed. Basically, all we did was take these little caps off to 10 millimeter bolt, unscrew both of them. And I did have to heavily modify the new unit that came from GM. Over here in the corner, you guys can see that I did grind down the edge of the cap that's basically so that we can make sure the supercharger clears and this is 100 percent clear so we should be good there and you'll also notice that i did bend the steam port itself it was pointed straight back i kind of just grabbed a socket bent it bent it bent it and finally got it to a point where it's pointing to the driver's side and what we'll do is we'll plug in the oil pressure sensor we'll put the steam port tube on here, then we'll put a hose clamp on it, and then that'll be it for the back. All right, now that we have the steam port installed, what we need to do is actually run the steam port line to it. So like I said earlier, I did pick up some Vibrant. This is quarter inch silicone hose. We have five feet of it. I believe this was $20, something like that. And we've got way more than we're ever gonna need. So what I'm gonna plan to do is actually use probably half of this, so two and a half, maybe three feet of this. Then we'll use the rest of this on the same, on a similar project that we're gonna do on the SS. So be on the lookout for that video in the future. So you'll see we have everything finished up in the back. We plug the oil pressure sensor back in. We have the rear steam port vents installed. We have this vibrant hose that we showed you earlier. And like I said, we were gonna put a hose clamp on it. But I did wanna show you this. So we're gonna route the steam 
vent hose up and around, you know, probably somewhere sitting like that. Then we'll have it come sit tied into a T right here, you know, in front of this fitting, and we should be good to go. I don't think we're gonna hit any belts. I don't think we'll hit the supercharger pulley because the supercharger pulley is like here, so we should be good. The only thing we might run into is the throttle body, but I don't think we should be too worried about that because this line, this hose right here, will actually be more like that, and it'll be even with the Mishimoto hose that we have right here. All right, guys, it's time to reinstall the supercharger. You guys will see that we've removed the tape. We put the fuel rails back in, and I've reset up my cushion for over here on the passenger side fender. You know, I'm not intending to put the supercharger on the fender, but you never know. Sometimes you might grab it funny and you need a place to set it for a split second. So I think we're good. We've got all the cushions set up. And the other thing that I did was I replaced all of the lower intake manifold gaskets on the supercharger. I'm not really sure I needed to because I, mean, I did just replace them like a year ago, but you know, better be safe than sorry. And the, I think the gaskets were only like in the $30 price range. So while it's apart, might as well replace it and uh, be good to go. So let's get the blower on. So the supercharger is back on the car. I just need to finagle it into its final place. Then we'll be able to complete the steam port vent project. But anyway, here is the rear steam port vent hose. I wanted to make sure the fuel rail was in place. I mean, yes, it's kind of mocked up. But if you guys can see down in here, you see where that hose clamp is? We're gonna take that off, cut that hose, put a T-fitting in, and put our hose to that hose. All right, we have the rear steam port completely 100% done. You guys can see that we have the silicone hose coming up from the back. That's this hose right here below the fuel rail. And then over here behind the power steering pump, I'm not sure what you guys can see, but we have our T-fitting and we have our three hose clamps. So basically what I did was I measured from the back of the steam port, put the T-fitting in, cut the hose, put my hose clamp on all three ends, so we basically all we did was added a T to this upper radiator hose. So we have our rear system hooked up into our front system and the front system runs into this upper hose right here and that connects into our Moroso coolant tank. So that's pretty much it. You know, I think we only have, I think the rear fitting was $35. That hose was roughly $20, but we'll get more than one project out of it. So let's say that hose really cost us $10 because we used about half of it. And I think that T-fitting was like $2 in a doorman pack. And for less than $50, I can't complain about that. You know, we will hopefully resolve any cylinder seven and cylinder eight weak spots that the LS motors have with that rear steam port being blocked off. Now, will this work for other cars? Yes, it definitely will. I actually got most of these ideas from a CTS V1 that was running an AE4 supercharger, as well as a CTS V2 saw a guy basically have the same port, you know, that same, I, I'm guessing it's for a truck or something like that, that same front port kit, put it on the back, tweaked it a little bit, ran some custom hose, and was done with that. Now, you could cut costs on this and just run a standard rubber hose, but since we were tying into the existing coolant kit, coolant line kit, which is that silicone hose, I wanted it to match just a little bit. So that's kind of why we went with that quarter inch vibrant hose. So that's pretty much it for today's project. We've got a ton more projects. So if you guys want to stay updated on this car, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that way you know when more Corvette updates come and also hit that bell notification button. That way you know when my posts go live. And if you guys want to help support the channel, make sure you check out all the links down below. I'll have the steam port kit if I can find it, the hose and the T-fittings and all that. And also check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. That's our merchandise store. 
and that all those sales there helps go right back in the projects and helps support the channel, the builds, and all that good stuff. So thanks guys. Have a great one. Yeah.